Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Ads and Dunks podcast, exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces, as always. My name's Adam Trelaw, and of course, my co-host um, via Zoom, as always, my best mate, uh, Joshy Dunkley. How are you going, mate? I'm good, thanks, mate. How are you going? Going good. I can only imagine there's probably um, one thing on everyone's mind and probably one thing on your mind, that's for sure. I know um, it was quite an eventful weekend for me, but um, <laughs> how, was your, how was your weekend, first and foremost, before we get into mine? I know you had your buy. Um, how did, uh, what'd you get up to? We obviously know you got to Melbourne. What'd you end up doing? Yeah, so it was good, mate. It was nice to obviously have some time out. And as I touched on, I was heading home to the farm for a couple of days. So I uh, came back, I went back to Melbourne on Thursday and uh, picked my old man up out of the hospital from back surgery and um, took him home to Yarram and spent two nights down there, which was great. I mean, it's it's so different when you're, you know, obviously living in a city, but um, you go home and you get that perspective and it's nice to just be in that country, fresh air and enjoying some time with the family, which I haven't really been able to do because I'm up here in Brizzy and mum and dad are so busy and the grandparents and stuff back home as well. So, um it was very nice, very uh, fulfilling, and then it was handy too because Tipper was playing in Melbourne last week, so I was able to get back to Melbourne on Saturday and um, got a haircut actually off Iran first yes, and did. then uh, caught up with Tipper and watched her play netball on Saturday night. And then I actually had a surprise 30th birthday that I went to as well, which I thought I'd mention yeah, tell on us, the potty. Tell us a little bit about that. That's uh, It was a funny little adventure of yours. Yeah, so uh, after Tipper's game, um, I went out to Hawthorne and Nevermind Bar, and I, I was a surprise guest at the at a thirtieth birthday, which was great. The the people there was were um were great fun, and yeah, it was a bit awkward me walking in uh, by <laughs> myself. But once it all happened, it was good, and spent some time there and had a chat to him and did the cake and things like that. And yeah, it was pretty cool to uh, meet them all and obviously uh, put a smile on on the faces. So. Yeah, that was eventful, and then um, I got a few text messages, mate. It was pretty funny because I was I was actually watching the start of the game of your game, and then just before I had to go in, and then I saw you uh, throw you that throw the mouth guard <laughs> away. I'm actually wondering if you've if you've lost it because I've got it here, mate. I've got I found it out of uh, the Marvel <laughs> Stadium walls. <laughs> well done, mate. Well done. So, uh, that's I'll just, that's um, the uh, 150th just, joke of the week. I um, think uh, Zimmer picked it up for me so um <laughs> gave it to me the angle of it looks like i threw it in scotty scotty's our physio the back of his head and the joke for the first couple of days was scotty have you have you um been able to pull it out of your head yet because as he threw it that hard but um <laughs> no it was uh it was quite funny um yeah i guess i guess uh, i guess we'll start with that i Obviously, you know how much – well, this is all seriousness, by the way. I know we take a bit of piss out of this, and um, it is funny looking back in hindsight because I was able to, um, you know, play and and get through the game. But um, my uh, I was just frustrated more than anything, as you could clearly tell. And um, it's funny because I had a couple of people who don't really know me that well. They only kind of know me as acquaintances. Um, and these are people at the footy club who only – I guess kind of come across and you know what it's like when you come across someone you're you know you're you're nice to him you say g'day and you just general chit chat um they said oh, i didn't know you had that side in you and i was like yeah don't worry mate i'm competitive just uh just ask uh, anybody <laughs> uh, especially dunks dunks knows how uh how angry i can get with anything but um yeah i i was just really frustrated because um you know i put a lot of hard work in to get back um i had been given the all clear to play obviously and um yeah, I've just got a, a, a lingering foot issue that's just annoying. I've been able to manage it all year, so it's not really um, you know that too big of an issue, but it was just affecting my calf. And um, clearly, when I came back out of the race, I was clearly you could clearly see I had some strapping on my calf. So my first thought was walking down the race um, five minutes into the game, my calf is super tight. It's like, oh my god, can I take a break? I I just want to firstly play um, unhindered, and I want to be able to you know, be myself and not worry about anything and second guess myself. And um, I was in the first five minutes. So um, that's where the frustration came out. That's where the angriness came out. I was thinking all things. I was thinking I may as well just retire. I'm sick of this. This is crap. I was just saying everything. Um, I could only imagine what Scotty and um, Zim were thinking, um, hearing all the stuff that was coming out of my mouth. And um, I was just, yeah, extremely frustrated because I thought, you know, um, I've, I've worked so hard to get back to play and, this ain't going to feel any better. I'm just going to be hindered for the game. But then, yeah, knock on wood, um, 
and and thanks Scotty and, and Bally who spent a lot of time with me down there. They were able to do a really good job in strapping and I was yeah, came out and um was able to contribute and play and um be okay. So going forward it's not so that I don't have an issue. It was just I thought that there was gonna be something there lingering for the game. So it was it was quite frustrating for me as you could tell. So you didn't actually get a corky or anything in your calf. It was more just you just felt tight and then came off and just thought that that was it? Yeah, as I said, I got a, I got a bit of a lingering. Um, and by the way, we got to say good day to Sonny. Sonny's making a guest appearance, which is which is obviously my dog. You can see his tail wagging in the background. But um, um, yeah, I, as I said, I got a lingering um, ankle issue, which a lot of people have, you know, as you touched on with your um, thumbs and whatnot that you have, you're able just mm. to manage them. And I've got obviously this ankle one that's been, you know, it was spoken about actually in the off-season when I had the off-season surgery. It's just been lingering around. Um, and obviously with me, the athlete that I am, you know, anytime I'm mechanically out of whack, something probably overcompensates more so than what it should. And in this instant, it was my calf. And, you know, especially with me and soft tissue, like don't want to take too much of a risk. I just was extremely tight and I was just thinking this sucks. Like, you know, so I, there was no episode. It was just, this is really tight for the five minutes of the first quarter when I was running around prior to my rotation, I was just thinking, like, I can't do this for another three quarters. Like, I'm just – I'm going to rip my calf in half or I'm going to do something. So, mm. um, as I said, thank God to Scotty and Bally. They're absolute gurus at what they do. And, um, you know, I do I do have to give them a lot of love, like, right now because um, for what it's worth, they, they hear a lot of my shit. And when I get frustrated in rehab in the last three weeks I've spent with them and, you know, even in the off-season when I can't get my body right, I always message Bally or Scotty and – um, they, they're always first to put their arm around me, tell me how much, you know, they love working with me and caring for me and getting my body right. It's a challenge for them as it is for me. And um, if it wasn't for them on game day, there's absolutely no way I would have been able to get out there. And, and the strapping job that they both did was incredible. So I'm grateful for them and I'm grateful to have them um, in my corner each week knowing if, if I were to have a, another episode or whatever it may be, I can put all my trust into them. So, you know, I appreciate them a lot, love them dearly. But, um, yeah, there's... um. There was no uh, no issue posted. It was just a really funny dummy spit, which um you know there was quite a few jokes walking into the footy club. So um there you know we've got this little rumor board at the footy club that we all joke about, and I think one of the jokes was about me doing a Paul Pierce. I'm not sure if you remember Paul Pierce when he got um do you remember him in I think it's 2008 finals he got wheeled out on a wheelchair in the game. Nah. He got wheeled out. Yeah. So no doubt Brado, our, our uh, one of our producers, would do an unbelievable job at this, but. He'll show the vision of Paul Pierce wheeling out on a wheelchair, comes running back out and plays the rest of the game. <laughs> oh. I kid you not, Dunks, you need to see it. So um, I had someone comparing me to that. So, um, yeah, it was quite funny. Oh, well, we've got the uh, – at least we've got the mouth guard back, mate. That's the main thing. I thought I'd bring mine along just to <laughs> stir you up a little bit. <laughs> what, 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 is the, um, what is the biggest dummy spit, I guess, you've seen in your time of sport, in any sport that you've seen? Oh, geez, it's a hard one to – I actually I haven't really thought of it. Do you have one off the top of your head? Yeah, I do. I've got one. Um, so back in – I think it might have been 2007, the Oklahoma State football coach who obviously is the coach today, the football team over in Oklahoma and it's a big Div 1 school and I think his name was um, Gundy, Mike Gundy maybe. I'm not overly sure but um, you've just got to do yourself a favour and look – at the video clip, type in and type in Mike Gundy outburst and no doubt it was, you know, you know how on ESPN they do like player of the day and all this stuff. It would have been player of the year. It was incredible. And all I remember, I've got a, a line here. One of his quotes the start was, I think they were coming after his team because they weren't winning and going well. And he opens up his presser with, with come after me. But imagine him saying it. So he goes, come after me. I'm a man. Oh, I'm 40. And then he grabs the paper and starts yelling at the paper. Mate, you need to see it. It's absolutely incredible. It's so funny. So funny. So that's probably my really? uh, <laughs> that'll be my number one number one um dummy spit that I've seen. It was absolutely hilarious, mate. It's funny because all the dummy spits that I remember uh very clearly are you. Just when, you know, you've either gone off at an umpire or thrown the mouth guard like you did on the weekend. I just remember <laughs> your one with Razor, Razor Ray. And uh <laughs> He, call, he didn't call a free kick or something. I can't remember what actually happened, but you were just like, Razor! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's funny. I did it a couple of times on the weekend as well. I mean, it's funny when I do do it because I did it again like a couple of times on the weekend when there was some free kicks called. The thing is, 
I know they're free kicks. I know they're going to be called free kicks against us. I just am hoping that the umpire doesn't call it a free kick. So when he calls it, I just have to let out something. So I just usually scream their name. So um, quite funny. I've had some good ones. Oh, yeah, actually, another good. one that I do remember is Brody Grundy. Brody Grundy, um, when we were playing at the Pies, we were playing against the Gold Coast, I think, at um, Etihad Stadium at the time. It wasn't called Marvel. And uh, this was when, you know, it was, I think it was the second last game of the year. Um, there was not much of a crowd there. So do you know when there's not much of a crowd at Marvel, there's a bit of an echo. You can hear, like, yeah. echoes. Like, you can hear your voice. And I remember Brody grabbed that out of the ruck and he did one of those handballs where, like, you handball out the side. One that, you know, I like doing and, you know, a lot of us <laughs> like doing. Yeah. And it looks like a throw, but it's not. Anyway, he got called for a throw. And I just remember him clear as day just screaming as loud as he can i reckon the guy at the top could could have heard it at the stadium i effing handballed it <laughs> and then umpire goes bang 50 meters straight to the goal square they kick the goal uh oh. it was funny quite funny but um there has been some good dummy spits that i've seen yeah well speaking of the bye mate and t- talked about before the 30th birthday i want to say happy 30th birthday to rachel that's who's the uh the ladies the girl's name was so Happy 30th to her. I know she'll listen to the podcast, as they all told me on the night that they do. Um, but it was good. As I said, it was nice to obviously get that time out and, and spend it. Sunday was mo- mainly spent with Tipper uh, and a couple of her mates sort of cruising around Melbourne, and I obviously caught up with you as well. So that was nice to to see you again, mates, after a disappointing good. night for you guys. Do you want to talk about your game and, and how you saw it all unfolding? Yeah, um, can do that. Firstly, did you- before we finish on your bye weekend, I just want to know, did you get down to your pub down in Yarram? I didn't. I didn't, know. Oh, you I didn't? Was, I was thinking about it. Yeah, it was funny because um, – did, did you watch Farmer Wants a Wife? I didn't watch it, but I know you have someone from on there from the area. Yeah. Well, Farmer Brenton, for those that know and watch Farmer Wants a Wife, uh, he was messaging me saying, come to the Woody. I think he was at the Woody on Friday night. But as I said to you last week, I had a massive calf corky, so I took it pretty easy on the Friday night and just stayed home with the family and my auntie and uncle and everyone came around to see dad. So, uh, after he'd, he'd been in hospital. So, um, yeah, it was a, it was a nice night. I didn't venture out to the Woody pub, mate, but I will next time. Make that's sure for sure time. with you. Yep. I'll make sure when uh, we get the chance, we'll head down there. Um, but no, we'll, we'll obviously you asked me about my game. So, um, we'll touch on that. It was obviously disappointing, disappointing result considering, um, we won a lot of the key indicators that, uh, you know, that you do, if you do win, you tend to win the game. So the fact that we weren't able to win is, is extremely frustrating considering we've um, felt like we set our season up pretty well Pr- prior to obviously the last couple of weeks. And, um, yeah, very deflating to be totally honest with you. Um, I uh, Frustrating that we were able to, you know, have plenty of looks. We clearly had plenty of shots. I think we kicked 10 goals, 15 or 16 maybe. Um, and... You know, a lot of those shots were gettable, so that clearly hurts you when you can't kick straight in front of goal. Um, mm. I think the thing that frustrated, um, you know, two things after that that frustrated me the most was we weren't able to connect, well, inside 50, but more forward half of the ground, um, even when we were unpressured. And there was, I don't know what the number was, but there was a lot of unple- unpressured plays where we just blatantly missed the target, just a skill um, acquisition and we weren't able to execute and, you know, turn the ball over. And you can't do that against anybody, let alone a, the, the reigning premiers. Um, so that was frustrating. And I think, yeah, the last quarter where the game was was still on the line, you know, well and truly on the line up until oh, four minutes ago in the game, um, I felt like their pressure was a lot better than ours and they were, they were able to, like we were bringing the heat, but they were able to withstand it way better than what we were. I'm still able to find targets away from the pressure in the contest and we just weren't able to do that. So it's frustrating because, as I said, felt like we um, really set our season up two weeks ago when we had that really solid win against Adelaide. Obviously went up to Gold Coast last week who are flying at the moment and were, were too good for us in the end. And then, you know, against a, a formidable team in Geelong who no fluke to the reigning premiers and um, are still going to be right up there, especially... You know, when they get Dangerfield back and Mitch Duncan and Max Holmes and these players back, um, and, and not to mention the guys that played on the weekend who are absolute guns, um, yeah, it's frustrating we let that one slip. And, yeah, challenges don't get any easier for us this week when we play Port. So um, frustrating, very frustrating. We've got a six-day break, so um, the best thing about six-day breaks is, is we're able to move forward 
um, pretty quickly, um, which we will. We'll go main session tomorrow. I'm no doubt we'll see a little bit more of the vision on the game, but um, we'll have to quickly move forward to Port Adelaide. And 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 they're, you know, I think they're. It says here they're, you know, Tommy does his stats really well and he loves his stats, but Port have equaled their record for for most wins in a row in their club history, which is nine. Um, and and one of those wins was against us in the gather round. So. Um, it's going to be an extremely, extremely challenging contest, but one where we need to, we need to win. The, there's no ifs or buts. We need to win. We need, we need to be able to take on a team who is going to be right up there, top four, come the point end of the season, and, and be able to play well and and show that our footy holds up against you know quality opposition. So um, we'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, I think they've actually set their club record. Last week they equaled it. This week go. they've set it. So yep. nine in a row for Port Adelaide, which is. Uh, Pretty scary task when you're coming up against them because as we've both we've both experienced this year, they're they're very good um, out there. So, one thing I do want to talk about is yourself. Obviously, you had a great mm. individual game. Um, how do you how do you, what do you put that down to? You know, you've had three weeks off. You've had, done a soft tissue injury, so there's things that early days you wouldn't have been able to do. But to pick up sort of where you left off, it's pretty impressive. Like. Let our listeners know what you do there and how you've prepared and and how your confidence um, is game day when you when you've been out for so long. Oh, well, my confidence wasn't that high. Ten minutes into the game, um, that's that's um, the honest truth. Um, no, I just think I always just think I've put in the work. So as soon as I declare myself fit, I I have an expectation in my own mind that I I need to perform. Like I need to, you know, bring my strengths and perform at my best and. Um, I appreciate you you um, heaping that praise on me and saying I played well, but there was some areas of my game that I was, you know, really disappointed in that I want to improve on next week and and set myself for. Um, but yeah, I just want to, you know, I, I as I get older and and more experienced, and um, I'm one of the the senior players in the group. It's a, it's a expectation and a standard that I want to set myself week in week out, regardless of how long I've been in the side. Um, you know, prior or post injury, so that was just my mindset going in. Um, three weeks off, I, I'd had a massive session the week before. I did about thirteen k's of footy training, Saturday sessions as you call them, um, to get the final tick of approval. And, and getting through all that gave me the, um, a great amount of confidence. And um, you know, after the fifteen minute mark of the first quarter, where clearly I'd come back on and the calf was strapped, I'd got in my mind that okay, I'm okay here. Um, it was just about. Doing, bringing my strengths and doing what I do well. And that's what I tried to do. And as I just said, there's still areas that I want to improve on and, um, you know, keeping my feet and being stronger in the contest a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I was pleased that I was able to still go out there and contribute and um, gives me good peace of mind that, you know, I the work that I did put in has, has put me in a good position to go out there and contribute um, and then go out there and execute. So um, I'll keep building on that. I, um, you know, I know I'm a big part of, um, our group and especially our midfield group, um, you know, which relies so heavily on us as a team to, you know, bring their A game every week because it, it is the engine room and it's what drives us forward and um, we've got some quality in there and um, I'm a part of that group and, and I want to be able to bring that and, and that brings wins and that's all I want, mate. You know that. You know, all I want to do is win. So that's always in the forefront of my mind and I know if I bring my best footy, it's going to give us hopefully a good opportunity to do that. So um, I appreciate the uh, the love, but there's... Um, clearly more room for improvement for me yeah no you, you're spot on i feel like you as you always talk about you're a team man mate and you want to do what's best for the team i do have one one more one though i want to finish on before we move on from your game bit of a lighter one i saw you and uh tom stewart have a bit of a bit oh, of yeah. an argument it was this a little bit of flopping no, we weren't we arguing. a little bit about the flopping it was no we didn't was argue at all with the, oh didn't you no 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 i said it wasn't a free Oh, you I said, said it wasn't the, a free, but yeah, what was he I saying? I said to the umpire, oh, he goes, it's not an effing free kick. And I was like, I went like, when I went down, because that's what I mean, I kicked it and just went to ground. I didn't, like no reason, yeah. I just went to ground and his arm must have slipped, the umpire must have seen it. And I said to the umpire, no, he didn't get me high. That's what I said. <laughs> so there was no- was he, um, was, he, was he filthy on you for like potentially flopping <laughs> i don't know because that's what it looked like not at all he was filthy on the umpire for calling the free kick so right, he said to right. me so when the umpire was there he turned around and was like oh so did you get me high did i get your high ads because i i know tommy stewart from vic country days um yeah it's pretty funny he wasn't picked in our under 16 vic country team which is crazy to think because he's one of a he's a generational player and one of the greats modern day greats mm. but um yeah he said uh 
did I get you high ads? Ask the umpire. And I said, no, he didn't. I said, turn straight to the umpire. I was like, no, he didn't get me high. It shouldn't have been a free kick. You know, <laughs> that's when he's like, see, see, it should have been a free. So, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But no, there was absolutely no, zero flopping from me. There's never, ever, I never try and flop <laughs> for anything. I wasn't saying that you were trying to flop. I was just saying that I thought he thought that you flopped. Like you did it intentionally nah, nah. to go to ground to get the free yeah. kick. And I was going to. I was going to um, just have a bit of a laugh about it, but you took it too serious, mate. It was uh, just trying to have a laugh. <laughs> hey, mate, I don't take, I don't take any, <laughs> anything serious, as you can tell. <laughs> but no, nah, um, it, it was all fun because I was trying to do the – I feel – because I don't like if a free kick's given against me when – like say, say when you dive on the ball and you know as soon as you dive on it, it's going to get called holding the ball if you don't like get it out. So yep. there was an inst- play where I dove on the ball, and as soon as I dove, I realized all someone has to do is lay on me and hold the ball in. So I like crawled out of the- So as soon as I dove on it, I like literally split second crawled out of it. So like my whole body's out of the contest, and literally the only parts of my body in the contest is literally from my quads down, and that's where the ball is, and that's where the Geelong player is holding the ball in against me, and I get paid for holding the ball. And it's like, <laughs> man, he's holding the ball. Like Anyway, I, I just wish... I wish the Geelong player, whoever it was, is like, oh, no, nah, I'm holding the ball and it should be a free kick. It's fine. Because I was trying to do that for Tommy Stewart because and, uh, he definitely did. I felt like he didn't get me high. But, um, yeah, it was pretty funny. That's good, mate. Uh, well, have you got anything else before you want to move on from footy? Oh, uh, well, obviously, it's going to be a big game for us this week. Um, mm. And, obviously, we'll look at your game as well. But, our, you know, we, we have to really set ourselves up for, well, I think a – between them and Collingwood right now, the two best teams in the competition. And they've been able to win in Adelaide and, and outside of Adelaide. And I think they've won oh, a ridiculous amount of games at Marvel. They seem to love Marvel extremely well, Port Adelaide. Um, so we we just have to bring our best footy. And, and you know, it, you know what it's like when you come up against teams who have that inner belief and momentum um, going into games that, you know, they're just going to – you know, get the job done and everything they're doing is is working, which it is. You know, the proof is in the pudding for them. Um, we're just going to have to come out with that mindset from the very get-go and and just freaking hit them head on, which is what we have to do. Um, and I love the fact that we're actually coming up against, um, as I said, one of the informed teams and one of the top four teams because it's going to be a great ch- uh, test to see where we're at as a footy group. We want to see, you know, how our footy stacks up. Um you know, a lot of the times you play your best footy when your back's against the wall. So um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And Friday night game for us, which we haven't had in a while, so really looking forward to being able to play Friday night game. Um, it's going to be a good co- good contest. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to to watching that one. I feel like it's going to be a, a cracking game. Obviously, Port flying, but um, you guys with your – after two two straight losses now, um, yeah, really looking forward to, to the challenge. I know what – what will be happening within that within the four walls this week at, at your club, mate? So, all the best uh, this weekend. We've obviously got the Hawks down at the mm-hmm. EMCG, so I'll be watching your game on Friday night just before I go to bed. And um, yeah, with with plenty of interest, but looking forward to the challenge against the Hawks. I remember you were talking them up a lot uh, after after you played against them. Uh, so we're going to have to be at our very best. We looked at them today uh, in some opposition analysis stuff and. Yeah, they they they're going a lot better. I feel like than what their ladder position suggests, and mm. Um, mm. very good at the source, as you mentioned a few weeks ago. You know they've got some really big inside mids, and um, they get Sicily back this week as well after suspension. I think it was so. Yeah, they're they're a great side. That um, I feel like they yeah they're up for the challenge, and we actually heard today that uh, they've beaten Brisbane the last three times, which is a an interesting stat. So the last three games they've played against each other over the last three years or two years, they've they've actually had the edge. So looking forward to that challenge and being a part of a, a game where um, you know you're coming out and we're really just going to you know challenge them as much as we possibly can. And it is it's always a, an interesting one post buy when you know you have a, have a week off and you watch a lot of footy and um, mentally refreshed, physically refreshed. So we're, yeah. good. we're definitely going to have to be on from the get-go as you boys will be against Port. But really looking forward to that challenge, as I mentioned. And, um, yeah, going to have to be at our absolute very best to to go down to Melbourne and play on the MCG and, and beat the Hawthorne Football Club. So looking forward to it. Yeah, that's a – as you said, it's, it's a good one because Hawthorne's best is as good as well, – well, I, I believe it can match 
anyone really. I th- you seen, mm. yeah, it was kind of a tale of two story, uh, two stories in the game on the weekend where Port were able to obviously kick, however, like they were dominating at half time. Um, yeah, and then obviously I think Hawthorne, I think they would have outscored them in that second half in particular, and they brought their flair and and when they really took the shackles off. It was exciting brand of footy. They really are attacking and take you on. Um, you know that's probably what you got to be wary of. And, and if they bring that and, and they're allowed to do that, um, you know they they can obviously match it with anyone. So I believe it's going to be a good contest. Obviously, another one, another great opportunity for you guys playing at the MCG because you don't get too many opportunities there. And obviously, that's where finals footy's played as well. So you must be looking forward to be able to play at the G as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I was at the Bulldogs, it was a similar story. We only really played there two or three times a year. And I think this year, um, we only play there twice. So, yeah, I'm excited. I love playing on the MCG personally. Um, I know there was plenty of talk about Brizzy and not being able to win on the MCG than they did it last year in that semi final yeah, against yep. the D's. So, they broke that hoodoo. And so, I feel like that's, the, that's relevant now. And we move forward and, yeah, just look forward to the challenge because it is the Coliseum of all. You know, football grounds around Australia, I feel like that's where you want to be playing your best footy at the MCG. It's where, you know, grand finals are played. It's where finals are played most of the time. So, yeah, looking forward to getting down there and, and running out on the MCG, as, as I mentioned. Yeah, well, you're right. You're right. It's um, I, There was a bit of talk about that last year. I remember we were obviously, obviously teammates at the Bulldogs and we were watching Brisbane in those games and that was their talk. And then they were able to obviously beat Melbourne, who were the reigning – yeah, hell, yeah, the reigning premiers at the time, um, and play really good brand of footy there. And um, once you get that off your back, it's um, you know it's it's smooth sailings from there. So I'm excited for you. I'm excited that you get an opportunity to play there because, as you said, it's the Coliseum, and you didn't get the opportunity much at the Bulldogs, and and you obviously don't get the opportunity now at Brisbane. So it'll be a good game. Do you reckon? Do you reckon there will be any? Because you look at their inside mids. Um, you know, will they? You know, just quietly, I think Will Day has the potential to be one of the best players in the competition in like a few years' time. He clearly shows that he has the capabilities and the ability. I just like his inside-outside work. Um, I reckon yep. he's going to be a, a good matchup. But is there any – do you reckon there'll be any matchups at all inside with you and anyone else, like maybe Newcomb or a um, bit of a cho- – uh, wait and see, see how you go? Yeah, probably wait and see. Uh, I don't – I haven't heard anything about matchups yet. We normally do that later on in the week, but yeah, yeah, they're all they're all very honest midfielders. I feel so. No matter who's going through there and who's playing in there for us is going to have to be on their game. And mm. yeah, we we really like to to reference them and and then play our way a little bit. So yeah, I feel like it'll be it'll be an interesting battle because they're I'm really sure they're number one for contested Test possession or yeah, yep. yeah, yep. yeah, or and clearances maybe yeah. yeah. Um, Something like that. So, yep. yeah, it's going to be a good battle and we're looking forward to the challenge. Um, as I touched on, we looked at them today. So, should be a good fight in there. And whoever wins that territory battle obviously gets the ball moving forward. And, and then mm. from there, it's a matter of, you know, defending it and keeping it in and hopefully kicking the score. Yeah, no, it'll be a great game. I, um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be able to watch it as well, which is great. Um, a couple other things for the, game, uh, for the round um, before we move on. I do want to mention... Buddy, Buddy plays a milestone game. Yep, he's three fiftieth on Thursday, um, and it'd be rude for us not to give him a uh, a bit of love. He is, you know, clearly someone I grew up watching. He was right, well and truly in my generation of growing up, and um, you know, he's one of those guys that we'll be lucky to say that we're able to, you know, step on the same footy field as him. Um, generational player, one of the greatest players of all time. Right up there with Dusty for me, um, being up close and being able to watch, you know, him do his stuff. But he has been unbelievable. Um, fortunately enough, I've never, I don't think I've ever been in a game where he's absolutely dominated against us. Early days at the Giants, first two years, we he'd, he'd do his damage by quarter time and get subbed out because we were losing by about 180, um, which were the good old days. But I've never really had a good, I've never really had a game where he's absolutely dominated against. Um, against me in particular, but I've seen plenty of of games where he has and it's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure to watch him. And, you know, who knows if he's going to play next year, but if this is his last year, what an unbelievable player he has been. But, yeah, congratulations yeah. on his 350th moment. Do you have any any memories of Buddy and what he's well, what he was able to bring? Or did he ever did you uh, ever have a game where he dominated against you? Uh, 
not really dominated like you're talking about. I've definitely watched him dominate plenty of times, but I do remember just every time you come up against Sydney, you know, Buddy is one of the blokes that you just have to look out for. Yeah. And it's like, yep. boys, if Buddy wraps around on his left foot, make sure we get someone to him because he's just a, mm. an elite field kick, but then can kick goals from within 70 metres of the goals. So, he, uh, yeah, he's one of the all-time greats. And as you said, absolute pleasure to, to watch and, and play against uh, on the field. So, uh, congrats to Buddy on 350 and hopefully a few more in the bank as well. I agree. Well, and the last thing I'm excited about the roundabout is um, the King's birthday game. So obviously yes. not Queen's birthday, the King's birthday, but the more importantly, it's the big freeze. I actually don't know what number yep. it is, but I was fortunate enough to be a part of the big, the big freeze games and I've actually got my beanie. I bought one from um, – I was getting a Coles Express coffee the other day and my favourite uh, my favorite coffee – like my favourite um, instant coffee, I suppose – rather than going to a cafe, yep. is the Coles Express. It's the best. If you haven't had it, mate, do yourself a favour. Um, <laughs> and uh, I seen the beanie and I went out and bought one and, and obviously realised. So it's a great cause, something that, as I said, I've, I'm extremely proud to have been a part of in, in, in numerous games and um, outside of Anzac Day game and, and the dream time at the G game, I think, well, I think it's on par with those two games and I think um, the awareness we've been able to bring, you know, around, um, you know, the disease is has been enormous for not just the disease itself, but for the AFL to really rally around it, get around it, all of Australia to get around it. And, and the fact that Neil Danaher is obviously the face of it is something that, um, yeah, it, it will always be close to my heart because I was able to be a part of those games and, and witness it. So that's another game I'm looking forward to. And the game itself, Collingwood, Melbourne, two of the best teams in the comp will be an exciting game. Yeah, as you touched on, mate, it's a very important game and um, raising awareness. I've, I've got my beanie too and we all bought ours uh Last week, I think it was. So, yeah, it's a great cause and um, very special moment for those boys to be able to run out in such a big game. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to watching that one on Monday when we're hopefully putting the feet up after a couple of Ws, mate. It'd be wins. nice. They, they award out the um, the best on ground um, uh, trophy. You get a trophy for it. And um, I reckon Nick Dacos will probably take the Anzac Day medal this year and probably take the uh, – Take the trophy for the best on ground in the Anzac in the um in the big freeze game. So it it'll be exciting to see if he does because he's and then probably take <laughs> out the Brownlow at the end of the year. You have have achieved it all by the end of his second year or th- is it his second or third year? It's his second, right? Second year, second year. Oh, oh my. more I think about it, I just just can't believe it. But um, that's it from a footy front. You got anything else you want to talk about footy wise? That's it, mate. That's it. Beautiful. Um, netball. As you said, you watched uh, you watched Tipsy play on Saturday. Fill us in. Yeah, I was. Um, it's a funny one because I went to the game after I got a haircut from Iran, and I went with uh, my two aunties and one of my uncle and one of my uncles, um, David, who uh, listens to the potty. So, how are you, David? Good to see you. <laughs> um, Thanks, Dave-o. On the weekend, um, but yeah, it was good. It was a. They obviously lost and. To be honest, mate, I was a bit suspect of the umpiring. It was a little bit, a uh, <laughs> little bit one-sided. To be honest, I was, yeah, I was a bit flat. I feel like everyone in the crowd potentially would have thought that some of the uh, the decisions were a bit rough on the from the Adelaide point of view. Um, so it was a bit of an arm wrestle. Collingwood actually got out to a fair lead, and then in the last quarter, Adelaide came right back, but couldn't quite get it done. So, yeah, disappointing result. I was, yeah. I was frustrated. I was very frustrated after that game because I just felt like some of the um, decisions that the that were being made because the Pies are a very physical team. For those that know netball, very f- mm-hmm. physical. So if you go and have a look at the replay or if you didn't watch the game, have a look at the replay and just see uh, some of the stuff going on behind play because I'm watching Tipper. So like she's trying to work around the circle and mm. yeah, some of the stuff was a bit bit rough i actually think she caught one from jeeva in the face and nothing was even called for that so um bit flat with the umpiring mate but we move on and uh, look forward to this week yeah well i feel like they were when i say they i mean collingwood i feel like because it was their last home game wasn't it, it was yeah their last home game in melbourne i feel like that was there was always going to be a little bit of extra spice in it and and want to want to get the job done you know in front of the fans for their last game so um, I was paying uh, close attention to that, um, you know, when I got off the footy field um, and I seen because the top four, you know, for the people that 
you want to hear us talk about netball, us uh, absolute gun gurus at netball. Um, the top four is <laughs> already set. It just matters. It's it just matters where the um, places are, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So um, there wasn't really any, you know, didn't really matter about points, but you could definitely tell there was going to be a bit of spice in the contest. And as you as you said, um, there were clearly some suspect um, calls, as you were saying. <laughs> and um, but no, I do think for what it's worth, I do think, uh, and I, obviously it sucks that Thunderbirds didn't win, but um, it was nice to see. I guess Colin go out the way that they did at home only because I genuinely feel for the players and I know you would too Mm. because imagine setting yourself up, you know, planning to be a Collingwood player for the rest of your netballing career or playing in Melbourne or whatever it may be and then getting told that, you know, you're not going to be a team in in three weeks' time or two weeks now because the two weeks is is to the end of the uh, regular season. So um, it was actually a nice little story, and I've seen Kim and, and a couple others who played, Matilda Garrett, a couple others that played at um, Collingwood who, who obviously had other teams now. They obviously they, they, they give a bit of a shout-out on Instagram and a bit of love because, yeah, it does pull at the heartstrings a little bit because um, it's a bit a bit of a sad story about the way um, how it's unfolded. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a nice little fairy tale for Collingwood to finish and win at home. It'd be very tough for the players, especially not knowing what the, the future looks mm. like, and I'm fairly sure they're – um, CPA, I think they call it, is still underway. So, yeah, who knows where what the future holds for netball? But as we are both big supporters of it, mate, um, yeah, looking forward yeah. to looking forward to seeing what happens because it's a great sport and uh, we love it a lot. But it wasn't the only upset for the round. Uh, the Firebirds no, wasn't. got over the Vixens no, wasn't. as well. So that was a huge win. I didn't I didn't see the whole game, but I saw parts of it because I was actually in the in the Virgin Lounge traveling back to Brizzy, but. Yeah, what a win, mate. Yeah, no, it was a really good win. They um you know, it's kind of been the story of their season so far. They've been able to beat some quality opposition and Melbourne Vixens are obviously one of the really quality oppositions of, of the uh, of the Netball League. So I wasn't really surprised. I just had this feeling going into the game. I um I know they've had this ambition and, and want to want to, you know, win two consecutive games and, and they love playing at home in front of a packed crowd. You've obviously been to Firebirds games, you could see how you know how they really the fans really get around them, and regardless of where they are on the ladder or how they're going, they really get around netball, which is great. Um, I just had this feeling, and, and they're able to get the job done. I was saying to Kim um, after the game that I just love watching her at wing defence. I f- feel like that's a really good position for her because she's able to set the game up, and I feel like she makes the right decision. Um, not that, as I say, always say we don't know anything about netball, but um, <laughs> she looks like she makes the right decision and. You know, it's, it's just really um, composed down there and um, it's great. It's great to see. I know she's getting a real kick and thrill out of it because she's the most experienced player there and um, you always want to, you know, enjoy what you're doing and love what you're doing and it's and it could be quite hard. You know, three weeks ago we spoke about um, Perth Fever putting up 99 points against them or goals against them um, and how deflating that can be. So it's great for Kim. Um, so I'm very happy for her. There's obviously two games to go. Hopefully they can, um, you know, win and, and, and finish the year off um, strong. But I also want to mention Lazi because it's real rude of me that I haven't mentioned her the last couple of times. She's um <laughs> she's uh she's flying. She um last week was um one of the best games I've seen her play in this and net points, which I'm not sure if it's like super coach or dream team. Probably probably like one of them, I would assume. I, I, I just know because the commentators reference the Nissan net points all the time. You've obviously yep. seen that. Where obviously in the yep. AFL, it's not like the commentators are talking about Dream Team and Supercoach. <laughs> um, but yeah, Lazi um, has been dominating. Last week, as I said, was one of the best games I've seen her play. And she was good again on the weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, extremely proud of the girls. They're going really well, and um, hopefully they can finish their last two games off um, win. That'd be nice, and then yeah, have a really good break and you know look real, be real optimistic about next season um, because. To me, watching and seeing the players that they've got, um, you know, I love Ruby, uh, Ruby Bakewell Doran. I don't want to pronounce that wrong, but I love watching her play and how she goes about it. Obviously, Danelle's a fan favorite, and I love her as well. And she's such a rock up forward. So, yeah, it's been um, it was good. It was a good weekend for her. I think I could be wrong. I actually could be wrong, but I think you know how we have that omen where if you lose, we lose. Other than that yeah. one week. I think every time I've lost or we've lost, Kim's won. Really? 
That'd be yes. pretty funny to know. <laughs> yes. L- at least you get some kind of uh, happiness in the relationship, mate. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So instead of a, instead of um, Kim being a mute throughout the week, it's me being a mute and just on the phone <laughs> and not saying anything. But um, no, nah, it, it was a good week of netball for Kimmy and Lazi and the Firebirds. No, nah, that's good. Um, yeah, as I touched on, it's going to be exciting to see how they go over the next couple of weeks and Adelaide obviously playing finals as well. So looking forward to following them through and obviously Tipper as well. So, yeah, looking forward to to that. But on to the next segment, mate. We have um, we did this last week and I thought it was pretty good. So we're, yeah, so we're right. going at it again. Tommy, uh, Tommy's got it. Oh, he's written this one here. Start, bench, cut. So let's go for it. This is current day players. So we've got, you can go first this time. We've got Christian yep. Petrarca, Geordie Degoe, and Zach Butters based on their current day form. Um, oh, it is a tough one because, yeah, obviously, oh, I feel like Petrarca and Degoe are similar players. Yep. Um, and obviously Zach Butters is not, he's a lot lighter and, Looks a bit niftier on his feet, and yeah, oh mate, it is a tough one. I, I'm gonna go just because I'm real biased, and I know him, and I play played with him, and you know I love the guy. I'm gonna go Geordie, start Geordie, which I know that is, I know it's gonna be controversial because I reckon you're not gonna start Geordie or bench Geordie. I reckon you'll cut Geordie, but I'm gonna Ooh. start Geordie, and. I'm so, so sorry, Zach Butters, because he could be leading the brown low and he's having an incredible season. Um, yep. But I'm going to cut Zach Butters and bench Christian Petrarca. So I'm starting Geordie and benching Petrarca. Nice, nice. I'm actually a little bit nervous about this because, as you said, Petrarca and Geordie are both very similar players and I love the way Zach Butters goes about his footy. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to bench Zach Butters and I'm going to start one of the other two. So I've got to just who? really make this. Well, I love Geordie. So I don't know. I think I'll go I'll go start Geordie, bench Butters, and cut Petrarca. Wow. So cut Petrarca. That, I, don't think, I don't think there's many people that would do that. I don't think anyone would cut Petrarca. Probably not. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I just think – because you, you, I just feel like you can't have – Two of the same players in this thing. So oh, agreed. Gotta... Agreed. Although, although I did go with them, but <laughs> I do understand that philosophy. But hey, do I wouldn't I mean? mind Petrarca and Degoe in the same team. Oh, it'd be pretty good. But <laughs> I, I, I just love Zach Butters and the way he goes about it. So that's my choice. I enjoy it. I like it, and I like that our fans get involved. So make sure you send yours through. We want to see what you think. Um, I want to do we, a bit of we'll a vote count. To do it. Yeah, we'll do a vote count, and it could be you versus me. Whoever gets. Not that there's a right or wrong answer, but everything's a competition between us. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, we're going to we'll answer some questions at the end that have been sent in from um, Instagram um, or on our social platforms right towards the end. But before we do that, we just want to finish out a little bit on NBA and what we love talking about a lot. And um, obviously, I get nothing right and uh, you get a little bit right. Although you did call game one Miami to beat I did. Uh, Denver. They did get one game, but it wasn't game one. But I kind of understood the philosophy, all the momentum going in. But it's been pretty crazy because, let's be honest, after game one, I feel like everyone, because in the, in the manner and the way that they won, they won pretty convincingly. Yeah. Everyone thought, oh, this will be a sweep. This is it. Denver are going to dominate. There's no way Miami win a game in Denver, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. What's your thoughts at the moment? Two games in. Yeah, I mean, you just said it. After watching game one, Nuggets looked unbeatable, and then game two comes around. But I I just felt like the whole time in game two, like it just felt like it was a game set up for Miami to win. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like sometimes you just know as soon as a game starts in the NBA, especially in the playoffs, like you can tell which team's going to win from the get-go. And yeah. Miami brought the heat. I thought Miami were – they were down a little bit early, but then they came back and they just kept staying in touch. And then, yeah, the fourth quarter was was a good one. So, yeah, now it just leaves it very interesting going to, going to Miami now and um, 
you know, where where Miami historically have been huge at their mm. home deck. So it's going to be a, an interesting couple of games. Yeah, what I, what I find, um, you know, pretty crazy is we all, we all talk about how good Jimmy Butler is, right? And he is. He's the he's the reason why they're there. He he is. He yep. if he wasn't on that side, they're obviously not in the finals. They're they're not playing to the level that they're playing. But I don't, I actually don't think if they say the series was over right now, right now. And Miami win. I actually wouldn't say Jimmy Butler wins the finals MVP. I think neither would I. I think Bam Adebayo wins it ahead, and I mm. think I think he's been the best Miami player so far. And I think Duncan Robertson's ten minute, well, not ten minutes, five minute period that he had, where he went on a ten and O run himself to get Miami back in front. Mind you, after. Miami shot 13 from 39 from three in the first game, and and Max Struess, who's an, who's their three point three and D specialist, went zero from nine in the first game. You know the, the fact that um, Duncan Robinson was then able to come out and in that five minute span was able to put Miami on a on a ten and zero back on a ten and zero run as I as I just touched on, and um, mm. yeah, played some unbelievable basketball down the stretch. So. That um, it's pretty crazy, as as what I just said. I genuinely believe that Jimmy Butler right now wouldn't be the Finals MVP for Miami, although he is their most important player. Do I do you agree, or is it just is that just me thinking that? Yeah, no, I do agree because I feel like you know there's a lot of other players doing a bit more than him throughout this series and last series as well. So if if Miami win, I agree with you. I think Bam should be should like, be up yeah, there. Like, and- yeah, obviously right now. So if there's like a like an MVP rankings at the moment. For both teams, mm. obviously, number one in my opinion would be Nikola Jokic as a whole. Yep. And then yep. second would be Bam Adebayo. Then I'd probably say Jamal Murray. Then throw a blank. Probably Jimmy Butler after that. No, I agree. I feel like if mm. if Miami can shoot well, like they've gone from thirty three percent in the first game to forty eight, nearly you know hitting one every two, then they're mm. going to go a long way throughout this series because the next two games are at home for them and. Yeah, it's going to be pretty juicy. So looking forward to it. Well, yeah, you're right because Max Struess and Gabe Vincent and um, obviously Kayla Martin, who is clearly hasn't been the Kayla Martin of the first two games, and yeah. he's a little bit out of the rotation now. Um, he's only getting about. He was your one to watch, is, mate. Remember? Yeah, he was. He was, which is uh, which is quite funny. But everything I say, as I said, doesn't come to fruition. So don't listen to anything I say. But um, <laughs> I, I just feel like he matches up differently on Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. It's a little bit hard for him to, to defend them. But anyway, he might have an explosion game. Who knows? Um, but it, it is funny because you do you are right. You're right with those threes. If they can, you know, hit their threes and Max Struess went, hit four threes in the first quarter and it's quite funny if you're a betting man, he his over-unders was like two and a half threes. And um, I said the other day, one thing I did get right, I actually said to one of my mates the other day, you watch Max Struess will – We'll shoot the lights out still. We'll try and shoot the lights out. And in the first quarter, he hit four three-pointers, four from five. So, um, mm. you know, when they have those games where they, you know, as we touched on the first game, he went zero of nine. I think Gabe Vincent might have gone, I don't know, one from seven or whatever it may be from three. Um, that, that doesn't mean they lack the confidence. They know that they need to hit their three-pointers to win the series. And, yeah, Struess was able to do it. As you said, Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent, um, even when Kevin Love gets the chance. Jimmy Butler doesn't shoot many threes, but when he does, he needs to nail it. Um, it's it, yeah. it's a, it's going to be a good series. I I feel like, well, I'm hoping that – I'm going to say hoping. I'm not going to say happen because when I say happen, it doesn't happen. I'm going to say I'm hoping that it could go 1-1, one, one, so one win in Miami to each team. So then it goes to obviously 2-2 two, two in the series and goes back to Denver because – we all, as fans, we all deserve um, a really good finals because it's been a pretty lackluster playoff so far, other than Miami versus Boston. Yeah, agreed. Do you think? Do you think the Nuggets are too reliant on Jokic, or when they are too reliant on him, that they potentially aren't as good? Because there's a stat going around that the Nuggets are zero and three when he drops forty plus. I, I do, I do, Dunks. I bloody do. I think, I think that when he. Because you, you clearly see how he plays. So if you watch the difference between game one and game two, he was clearly trying to pass the ball more, get his teammates involved, this and that. Where in this game, yes, they were putting a lot of pressure on him, ball pressure on him in Miami, but he was still trying to take shots. He wasn't really trying to pass the ball. And 
as Tommy has put down here, who's, as we say, the best, one of the best producers and, and absolute gun, loves his stats. They're zero and three when, when Jokic drops 40. And it clearly works for Miami to let him score. I personally think, I personally think that Jamal Murray is, I don't, I don't want to say more important because Jokic is clearly a superstar. But if you can nullify Jamal Murray and game one he had, I don't know, 30 or 40, whatever he had. Game two only has 18. But it's it's like a it's an ineffective 18. He's not playing that good of basketball. He's turning the ball over. When he's not scoring or playing the way he wants, they won't win. Where Jokic can drop 40, Miami still have a chance to win. I personally think Murray is is as important as Jokic, if not just that little bit more. Because we've seen once Jokic came back into the lineup, sorry, sorry, once Murray came back into the lineup in the regular season, they were so much better. They were already great, yeah. but then they went to whatever's after great, dominant. Yeah. And when he hasn't played well, it gives opposition teams a chance Not to win. So, so, yeah. And I think I think Jimmy Butler's taken that responsibility, which is cool. He's, he's taken the matchup on Jamal Murray, which – which I love. I love the fact that Jimmy Butler takes the one of the toughest assignments on um, defense and then obviously the ball goes through him on offense, which just shows a true superstar. It's like you when you come up against, you know, bigger bigger mids and you just take your, take it upon yourself to go to a mate defensively and then kick goals from 50 on the uh, run offensively. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I do, mate. <laughs> I feel like you're talking about your defensive side and maybe a little bit of my offensive side, but... um. Uh, well, what's your what's your this time next week? There will be two more games played. What do you yep. think? What do you think the uh, series will be there? I'm going to go rogue and say I reckon Miami will lead the series three one. Jeez, and then it will go to Denver, and then Denver will win, the, will win the next two, and then go back to Denver. So it goes to Denver, Miami, Denver. So you're saying they go loss, loss, and then win in Denver, win in Miami, and then game seven in Denver. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I, I can't argue with that because I don't know anything, but Miami <laughs> Miami, and Miami are hard to beat. And Yeah, um, that's what I'm thinking. Mm, and even Denver and Denver are hard to beat. And Miami, the, the last time the Heat actually beat Denver in Denver was 2016, seven years ago. Yeah. And that's the and, first, and, that's the first yeah. time the Nuggets have lost in the, at home in the playoffs, which is huge. It's the altitude. Do you reckon – what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Do you think – do you think it would be well, that big of a thing? Yeah, well, I I don't know. Probably not. But, you know, it's like coming up and playing up here in, you know, the first few rounds of the year. I feel like the humidity and, you know, it just changes the game. So, potentially, guys are a little bit more tired. I don't know. It, it, it's harder to breathe and whatnot. But, yeah, it could play a part. You never know. We don't know because we don't really – we haven't been there and experienced mm. it and played like, mm. you know – played a game of basketball or footy so yeah it's a tough one to actually put your finger on yeah because you see that a lot of the storylines that have been made up throughout the playoffs is that reason why denver is so good is because the altitude and teams can't breathe and all this stuff so mm. yeah it's quite funny it's a quite it's quite funny narrative or um also with the heat they've also won the most games as an eight seed um in a single postseason so far which is another incredible I know I asked you last week, or you asked me, and I'm going to ask you again, um, and I just want to hear your answer again because we're another week closer to knowing. Do you genuinely believe that this will be the best basketball story or basketball winning season by an individual team ever? Oh, absolutely. I feel like if Miami can get it done, it's just unbelievable. You? Oh, yeah. The more and more, like the fact that they went 1-0 down – and then obviously we're down by almost ten in game two in Denver, and they've came back and won, and and yeah, the fact, and, and also that the players, the amount of players they have on their roster that are undrafted just blows my mind. Blows my mind that an organization can then take them and turn them into gu- uh, role playing guns. Really, really, they go yeah. undrafted into their organization. And their organization is that good enough as an organization that turns him into absolute guns. And you've got a leader like Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. So, yeah, it still blows my mind. I think regardless of whether they win or lose now, it just it'll, it'll go down as one of the great seasons of all time by a team. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Because I've seen 
One more thing on that. I seen a little thing today. It was remember this, and it was Miami Heat v Chicago in that playing game. Winner gets booted out of the season. They were down like with eight minutes to go. Yeah, <laughs> and they st- yeah, it's just almost like it's almost like it's a fairy tale for them to get it done. But um, yeah, I cannot wait to see this time next week uh, what we've got to talk about with the NBA. Same here. Um, you said that we're, we're going to do some questions, so let's move into that segment now before we finish up. Um, do you want to kick us off with some of the good ones that you've got? Yeah, yep. As you said, love. Um, we love the questions that get sent in, so make sure you send them through as much as you can on all our social channels. Um, first one, I'll start a bit lighthearted. Uh, I know you love your shoes. Um, Bree J07 has asked, how many pairs of shoes does Josh Dunkley own? Oh, uh, well, I could probably count this room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty-four. Uh, I'm probably going to say around fifty odd pairs of shoes that I've got. Wow. Which is what do you reckon I the value like of those shoes are? Oh, I've got a little thing that I've um, like a portfolio. Oh, that's right. And there's a there's a there's a there's a fair bit. In there, I think I've got about, I don't know, fifteen k of shoes potentially. <laughs> um, it's a lot of shoes, here. mate. It's a lot of I shoes. Need a, I need to share a photo of it. How many shoes? You, you'd have a fair few too. Not as much as you. I've got top of my head. I'll say about forty. But I, I you know, me, I collect my NBA jerseys, so I've got more jerseys than I do shoes. Well, speaking of shoes, Lenny mm. SPR fourteen has asked, what's the most expensive pair of shoes you've bought? Ever since you came into my life, mate, I've only <laughs> I've, uh, that's where I started to part ways with cash and shoes and clothes. <laughs> um, for myself, or can I say, because I've spent expensive shoes for Kimmy, but not for me. My, mine would probably be you. like, no, nah, mine would probably be oh, like $400 maybe on those, on the, on the dunks, the Nike Air Dunk, the lows, the blue and white ones, you know, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, light blue, like the aqua color. Yeah, probably those. Yeah. Nah, same you? here. Actually, ones that I do love that are, that have kicked off because the Kobe's. Oh, um, yes. Yes. These ones are, yeah, these are probably one of my favorites now because of all the events that have happened and obviously very sad to, um, to lose Kobe, but uh, yeah incredible shoes and i feel like the the market for those has gone nuts because of the passing of the the great man so yeah unfortunate yeah, but they, they, nice pair of shoes they are a nice pair um i got a i got a bit of a serious one yep this is from locky under lachlan underscore innes for you joshy it says you guys but i'm asking you how do you stay on top of your mental health as an athlete we always hear about my, me I don't want to hear about yep. my mental health. I want to hear yours. Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, for me, I feel like balance is crucial for mental health. And, you know, I've, I think I, we've, we've talked about it before where I've talked about, you know, having a, a circle of people, like an inner circle of people that you always go to um, with little things. It might be, you know, if you're struggling, you, you give them a phone call or you catch up with them for coffee. And um, my inner circle is a lot of my family. and um, ads you're probably you're in that inner circle as well uh if i you know when i when i ring you and have a phone call like the just to be able to get away from footy and understand you know i feel like you know me and i know you and to be able to you know um lean on those types of people is very important tip is obviously one of those as well so um yeah i feel like that is really important for me and being able to have the you know your footy life and then your home life as well so you know, for me, I'm studying real estate, as we've talked about. So having that separation from footy really helps. Um, and then something that I've sort of grown and learnt up here is that I feel like that balance is is a lot easier to have because you're, you're not in that footy bubble. So it's been nice to be able to really separate yourself from the, from the footy world, I guess, outside of the club and outside of games because when you do go home, it just feels like you're living a normal life, which is, yeah. which is awesome. So... For me, yeah, it's a lot, a lot about balance. I don't know. Um, you, you'd obviously have your say on what you think, but 
that is my number one thing to have those people yeah. that you rely on and that you can trust with whatever information you tell them. And yeah, they help you get through day to day and and your ups and downs that you might might go through. No, it was a great answer. It's important that people who listen and our listeners that listen, that is probably the most important thing for just the general person, not just footy players, but being, being able to have work-life balance because as you get older, you know, the stresses of life and work and, you know, when you then have a relationship and have kids and whatnot, you got to still be able to have that balance. So good answer, mm. mate. I um, We've never really spoken about your side. It's always about mine. So I um, I reckon Locke will appreciate that. Nah. That's good. Great question. Uh, one here from me. I'll go on a lighter note for you, mate. Um, Harry Bales, mm-hmm. win the lotto for two hundred million. What do you do with it? I don't want to give a boring answer because my boring answer would be to pay off my houses. <laughs> uh, Seriously. All oh, right. Oh, would you give me any of it? My first. So listen, honestly, hand on heart, right? Hand on heart. <laughs> my. So I, I would want to pay some of my houses off, but my first thought would be I'd give money to the people that I care about the most. So obviously you're not one of them. No, nah, you're one of them, clearly. <laughs> you're clearly one of them. Um, my parents, my siblings, um, and a couple couple handful of friends. Yeah, I'd probably give away – I'd give money – I'd give more money away than what I'd keep. Um, and then the rest literally – it's a, it's a boring answer, but I'd literally want to pay off my houses. I'd probably, yeah. I'd probably treat myself to maybe a mill here or there, and, and um, <laughs> I don't know. I'd do something relating to American sports. So I would, I'd fly probably business or first class to, to the states. I'd get a handful of us um, during the NFL NBA season. I'd make sure we're staying at the, you know, well, you're you're the uh, gun over there. You know all the contacts over there, so. <laughs> I'll get you to tee up someone to organise a, the best hotel or whatever it may be um, and then go get the full experience at, you know, maybe a, a Los Angeles Rams game or a Chargers game or go to New York and watch the Jets or the Giants. Just do anything anything sport-related um, or American sport-related over there. But the boring initial answer would be to pay off my houses. What would you do? Uh, yeah, very similar. I'd probably pay off my debt, that's for sure. I'd probably buy myself a pretty cool car, to be honest. I'd love. I was a, gonna say, I was gonna say that would be your my first thought for you. Yeah, I'd probably, you know, like a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini <laughs> or something like that. Something cool would be sick. I'd love that. Um, but yeah, I feel like you would just you'd give a little bit around to the people that you care about most, and um, yeah, donate a little bit to charity. I feel that that would be on the list too. So things like that. Um, because it is a lot of money that you're just potentially going to, um, you know, leave there for a bit. So to do mm. some nice things with it would be would be great. We'll do a couple more. I've got two more. First one is we know Dunks is a bit of a foodie. Any recommendations for spots in Brisbane? And this is from Kimberly Hilton's. Oh, spots in Brisbane. I'm still learning the ropes. Uh, Favorite restaurant in Brisbane is probably Steak and Oyster. Went there last week for Lara's birthday, so uh, that's probably one of my favorites. Um, that whole precinct there is is really good. You can't really miss around Hellenica and and uh, what's the other one? I think Honto is a Honto. Honto, have you been there, Ads? Me, mate. I've got no idea. Honto is another place uh, in the valley that's really good around my area. Uh, there's a few, you know, on the Paddington Strip that, that, that are nice. I feel like I'm still exploring it, but though that hub in the valley there is very good. Happy Boy is another one that I love too. So, yeah, there's a, there's a few for you. This is from Eddie Jens twenty two. Biggest pet peeve of me. What do you mean pet peeve though? Is it more like a? Are you saying like something that I don't like about you? I'd say, oh mate, oh I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. What would you say for me? Oh, I'd just say. A habit. I'd say it's a habit. So what's a what's a pet peeve of a habit that you do? So we are, I already know, I already know the answer. I already know the answer because um, when we did our uh, when we did our podcast with Tommy on Oz American Aces last year, um, I mentioned it. The guzzler, remember? Oh yeah, the guzzler. <laughs> I don't know. What did I even say? I can't remember what I said for you. Oh, you said that. I which is right. Which is right. My organisation skills. Oh, horrendous! If you're yeah. actually, yeah, that's a, that's a bad habit of yours. That that is one of the worst because 
you're such a hard man to get a hold of. I don't even know how we organise this podcast, mate, and get you on here every week at the right the time. Issue because is, you just... mate, no, the issue is I'm a people pleaser. I want to please everyone. So I say yes to everything, say no to nothing, and then out of nowhere I've got 50 different things I've got to do. But you know what goes straight to the number one priority list whenever it's anything to do with you. So it's all good, mate. <laughs> It's all good. Uh, it might be a little so bit late, need, but it's all good. I don't need to stress then. That was a good question. Right, that was we'll, my last one. We'll, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up there then. Um, thanks again, everyone, for listening to the Ads and Dunks podcast, uh, exclusively brought to you by the Oz American Aces. We really appreciate all your support. Remember to head over to Spotify and Apple. Uh, give us that five-star rating because we still haven't hit the 1,000 mark where we're going to do a massive giveaway. So thanks again, Adzi and... Great to talk to you again, mate. Look forward to to next week's podcast. Thanks, mate. Good luck this week. You too.